Warning, this video is rated IQ and not suitable for anyone under 50. It has factual information and may contain bleeped out words. Viewer discretion is advised. This will be a long video. If you're looking at hearing how my channel is hacked, tips and tricks, some humor, some do's and don'ts, and expect that in the next five minutes, I invite you to watch something else. Otherwise, let's do this. This video is not sponsored by the criminal creep mother pool head hackers. Although they hacked my channel for free, they had no opinion on the content of this video. Yep, it's gonna be one of those. For those that didn't know, let's do a short recap. February 13, 2021. Hackers get to my Gmail, the one used to log into my YouTube account. They hijack my YouTube channel. They start a live stream cryptocurrency scam, including chatbots. YouTube terminates this channel after about 60 minutes. I find out about this maybe an hour after that. I try and log into my Gmail account. It says my password was changed an hour ago. Since all my YouTube channels are a brand account, all my channels are now not accessible. I contact YouTube through Twitter. That's at Team YouTube. YouTube has me send a verified alternate email address. I fill out a form saying the channel was hijacked with all the details. Then I wait and I wait and I wait. Meanwhile, I post hack apocalypse tweets every day on Twitter. I've disappeared from the YouTube, from Google, from searches, everything. I notice I can't get into my enemy on YouTube channels as they're all under one account. Thought. I have 125k subs wondering what the hell's going on. Three weeks goes by, so I create a new channel as the restoration could take months. Start uploading some viewers fave videos to the new channel. Ask people to help kickstart this activity. Thought. I wonder how long it's going to take me to get monetized. 4,000 watch hours, 1,000 subscribers, starting from zero. Fact. YouTube is my full-time job. No channel, no money. YouTube finally restores my channel after nearly four months. I lose a month of all income. Zero. Zip. Nada. One month later, I'm still picking up the pieces and doing cleanup, but the channel is back. Let's take up each of these points and you'll learn something about hackers, YouTube security, and life. Okay, so hackers get to my Gmail, the one used to log into my YouTube account, hijack my YouTube account. Fact. You have a better chance at winning the lottery than getting hacked, so step away from the clip and go through all the junk you should do to protect yourself, but we'll let someone else do the work for us, Google. If you have a Google account, click on your icon at the top right and choose manage your Google account. Next, take the security checkup and you'll learn a ton about what to do. If it finds any issues, it will flag them and allow you to correct them, such as it shows you all the locations logged into your account. For me, it's my iPad and computers at home. It shows if you set up two-factor authentication known as 2FA and lets you download a pack of 10 codes only you can use if you get locked out. It shows you what you've granted access to, for example, TubeBuddy and vidIQ tools that I use to manage my YouTube account. It tells you where you've used non-secure passwords or duplicates across the web and allows you to fix them all. It should look like this, all green checks, you're now secure and it's simple. That's how you protect your account from getting broken into, hijacked, or hacked and should be done on all the accounts you have. From what Google and YouTube have told me, instances of people being hacked into with all these protections in place have been nearly zero. Again, you'd have a better chance at winning the lottery. You can go crazy with dongles and devices and password apps and all that. It's cool by me if you wanna do that, but I have my own opinions. Now, much of this is based on having legit passwords. We interrupt this video for an important password tutorial. Managing passwords can be crazy and you definitely should have a separate password every place you go. Had I used the same password, these craphead hackers might have gotten access to all my email accounts, banking, PayPal, and so on, and financially devastated my life. I love people, but I must say these hijacking fools really tested my patience. Sort of thinking these sh**heads get fired off to Mars for 10 years to oil the wheels on the Land Rovers or something, but I digress. Disclaimer. No, I don't need 55 different experts' opinions on this. I got the goods for someone who manages over 20,000 passwords, and he knows what he's talking about. An 8-character password can be computer hacked roughly in an hour. A 12-character password could take weeks or months and on. I don't know the order of magnitude on longer passwords, but you get the idea. If I have a 20 or 100 places I log into and must have a separate password on each, here's what can happen. Sticky notes all over the place or a notebook with all the info. Lose the notes or the notebook, 
and I'm screwed. Create a file or spreadsheet. Cool, but lose the spreadsheet or computer and I'm screwed again. I can use an app with one password to manage everything and it sits on top of all my other passwords. I don't know about you, sounds great, until I lose my phone or worse, that gets hacked. Whether you need to remember five or 20,000, the solution is simple and I'll call it Keyword separator pattern separator number. Uh-uh. Keyword separator pattern separator number. Uh-huh. Keyword separator pattern separator number. Uh-huh. Get that stuck in your head, you'll never forget it. We have keyword separator pattern separator number. Let's do a simple example. I set up, not my mother's maiden name, something personal. Go totally whacked and come up with something like this. Keyword flying cats drink coffee. Already I've got a 21 character password, very hard to hack. Now let's capitalize one or more of the characters, in this example, C in coffee. Now even harder to hack. Most sites require some character simple too. For this simple example, we use a dash in the separators. You can use an exclamation point, a number sign, or have one for each one separate. It's your choice. Now the number, any random number. Don't use one, two, three, four, your social security or something like that. Let's throw in 807. Keyword, flying cats drink coffee. Separator dash, another separator dash, number 807. Very, very unhackable. Now we need a password for say, www.bankofmars.com. We go to the dot in the dot com, grab the four characters left, turn it backwards, in this case, S-R-A-M. That's our pattern. Flying cats drink coffee, hyphen, SRAM, hyphen, 807. Trust me, once you grok this, you'll go, uh, oh. our password is now a 30 character password that meets all the requirements for any website and it's very unhackable. What about my adobe.com account? We replace the four characters from Adobe backwards and get flying cats drink coffee hyphen EBOD hyphen 807. It doesn't matter now if you have two or 2000 website logon ideas. Once you set that up and remember that flying cats drink coffee with a capital C and the number 807, you're good to go. What about the case of something like Gmail where you have multiple accounts? Let's say Kevin Filmmaker at gmail.com and my personal Gmail account at gmail.com. You wouldn't want to use the backwards Gmail as an L-I-A-M. For all those accounts as you're using the same password all over the place, you don't want to do that. So in this case, just use the characters before the at rather than the dot com and all the email accounts. Kevin Filmmaker at gmail.com is flying cats drink coffee hyphen R-E-K-A hyphen 807 and my personal gmail.com is flying cats drink coffee hyphen T-N-U-O hyphen 807. No matter what site you're at, you'll know what the middle pattern is. You can even cap a letter in each of those. With all the other securities in place, such as backup emails, two-factor authentication, and so on, forget the lottery, you'd have a better chance of having a meteor fall on your head. Win or lose, your choice. When I first realized my main YouTube channel was hacked, that I couldn't get into it, that it was terminated, that nearly 500 videos that were gone, that all my channels were inaccessible, that my source of income was gone, that I was gone on a race from the internet, I freaked the hell out. <laughs> About 10 minutes, I decided no forkin' way. These hackers, AKA criminals, AKA antisocials, AKA non people, whatever their motivations, money, fame, whatever, they have one thing in common. They thrive on creating chaos. No matter what the reasons, that's the game they are playing. They thrive on making you less, making you afraid, making you fearful, and having you tell everyone else what happened to do the same thing to them. You're like a patch of weeds on your lawn, and unless you're nuts, why would you fertilize and water the weeds so they can grow? These people are a bunch of itty bitty cowards who hide behind their computers creating chaos. And like an insane person, watch and laugh as they burn you, companies, jobs, and everything else to the ground. They like to make you think they are everywhere, but that's part of their game. They live on creating chaos as they can't create anything else in their miserable little tiny lives. You get a taste of this when some insane person comes to your videos and leaves some crazy irrational comment after comment after comment trying to pull you into their game. Of course, you being the sane and rational person try to make excuses or figure it out. Why would someone do that? Tip, don't try and figure out why an insane person does insane things. The answer is they're nuts. That's where everyone goes. Who did this? Why did it happen? 
What did I do wrong? How come everybody is against me? All that crap is what they want you to do. Screw them. Let them die out. And the way you do that with insane common people or hacking criminals is, one, ignore the hell out of them, and two, handle any danger they created for you, and three, don't forward their message to others as much as you can, and four, keep creating and doing what you do as that's what drives them crazy. You want payback? Don't play their game and keep creating. Game score, you won, hacker zero. Me, my channel's back. And I win, you crappy mother blame game. When something like this happens, you might want to blame someone or something. You see this when people are angry and they start lashing out at the spouse or the kids or the cat or the car, and none of these is why the person is angry. The volume of people who jump all over YouTube and Google is amazing and it lets the hackers win as that's what they want you to do. Nothing would please them more if Google and YouTube and the hundreds of thousands of people who work there were gone tomorrow. YouTube is not the target. Google is not the target. They didn't create the chaos and do the hacking. The hackers did. YouTube is not some evil bad person and in fact, for the first time in all of history, regular people like you and me if we're willing to work at it, have a chance to reach a worldwide audience and make money doing what we love to do. That has never happened before. Oh, and while I'm on the subject, YouTube is not a person. It's a company composed of a lot of hardworking people. They do their jobs, they pay taxes, they have kids, they support certain good causes and on and on. You want to kill off YouTube and all the good folks who work there? That's what these evil hacking criminals would like. Google and Walmart and all these other large corporations employ millions and millions of people. These people have jobs. They pay their taxes. They pay for your roads and fire departments and schools and teachers and street signs and government officials and on and on and on and on. You want to attack them? Put them out of business? Create a jobless population like never before seen with a failing economy where there's no more teachers, no more schools, no more roads, no more water, no more stores and food? That's what these crazy criminal hackers would like and they would laugh the whole time while the whole system burns down to the ground. Just don't play that game. What YouTube did. What YouTube did was immediately shut down the hijacked channel where the hackers were trying to get you into their web scam. My Happy Mike channel got shut down? Hell no, but I commend YouTube on doing so. Woo! They shut down my channel, my one channel to protect you and everyone else on YouTube, and frankly, that's the right thing to do. What? They should call a meeting, decide over the next couple of days whether they shut down my channel or not. Was it actually me? Will I be okay? Blah, blah, blah. All the while, these criminal hackers are scamming people and hurting other viewers and creators on the platform. As much as it pains me to say so, YouTube did the correct thing. They protected everyone else at my expense that I agree with. They protected you and everyone else from being harmed by these hacking idiots. They got all the information from me, hunted down the hackers, found out how they got in, closed yet another door to these chaos demons, made another step forward in protecting everyone on YouTube. They didn't sit there and blame the hackers or the government or the weather or YouTube or Google or anything else. They got to work and worked on restoring my channel, which is no small feat of magic. All my channels, my passwords, my members, my community pages, my comments on my own videos, my comments on other videos, all the comments from others on my videos, that's nearly 30,000 of them. All my YouTube channels, all my subscribers, all my embedded videos on YouTube, on other platforms, that's only about 30% of what they had to restore. And they had to make sure the hackers didn't get into anything else. And they had to test it all. And they most likely had to report this to whatever governmental agencies in the US, or probably abroad. And they had to put protections in place to make sure this doesn't happen on other channels. And, and, and. Oh yeah, real people had to do this work, not bots. In my book, YouTube deserves a freaking award. As far as communication, I'm gonna give them a hard fail. I don't know if they have some non-communicate thing in place by government order, internal policy, or they just don't get it. I can tell you I had to come down on them with daily tweets and emails and all sorts of pressure to finally get a real person and partner support to communicate with me. Until that point, about three weeks, I got 
nothing back. That's almost unforgivable. Here you have a guy where YouTube is his living. That's his income, his paycheck. He's built this up over nearly eight years, and in one single day, everything he built, including his income, went away for nearly a month with no communication. So, YouTube support, partner support, CEO, whatever, if you're watching this, you really need to get it together and communicating back to someone when a disaster happens. Three weeks is totally unacceptable. I am sure there are many fine people there, but when I tell them on Twitter I can't get into my channel as it's been hijacked, and they tell me to log into my channel and ask for partner support, like three times after responding to them, well, that's either an inability to read, a don't care attitude, or some stupid policy. And I should note these folks who spent three weeks playing around with me were getting paid while I wasn't. I hate to bang on Twitter's team YouTube, as they were partly responsible for making all this happened but seriously the I have a problem as my video isn't uploading as fast as I think it should be and my fracking channel was hijacked and I am out of my primary source of income losing viewers and subscribers are not the same thing it should be responded to accordingly my having to constantly follow up with you asking over and over and over again if anything's being done being told it's worked on, being told partner support got back to me when they hadn't, and all that is not an acceptable way of handling what should be emergency. High check channel, red alert, follow up. I love that you are there and I love that you respond, but please take a look at what is a major fire drill versus something that is not as important and make sure you follow up on these. We're out here in the cold with no means to communicate with partner support, so it's up to you to make it happen. Thank you. The amazing people. Not all of this was bad, and in fact, some awesome things came out of Hack Apocalypse. Many over at Basic Filmmaker University came and asked if I needed help. Many YouTube creators, some already friends, Many, now new friends, asked if they could do anything to help. A few companies rose to the occasion and likewise said, can I help you? Many viewers and subscribers found ways to contact me despite my being cut off from the world and offered their support. There are so many others that came and offered aid. The list is far too long to mention them all, but you know who you are. And to you, I cannot tell you how much that meant to me. That's what got me through Hack Apocalypse. All the good people. Oh, and those bad guys? They don't have any friends, and if they did, their friends would stab them in the back the first chance they got. That's a suck life, eh? One, get your account secured and use Google Checkup to make sure. If you wanna take additional precautions, do so. Two, don't play the hackers, hijackers, attackers, haters game. They are such a small minority of the population, and they don't deserve an ounce of your attention. Many people in this world are good, most of them. They're just trying to make money, raise a family, help others and all that. It's only a handful of people that are truly bad. They just happen to create all the chaos and make all the noise. Three, you can win the game by creating right the hell over them. I made this video here to say this is what happened and the celebration is to say, we're done, let's move on. Thank you for your support, your kindness, and just being awesome. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Ah. Woo! Holy crap.